I'll do this in Norwegian, in English, because we have uh, foreign guests today. Uh, I would like to uh, welcome uh, you all to the monthly uh, meeting in uh, Nuuk, where we uh, have visitors from Germany talking about uh, how they uh, teach uh, good uh, science and free software stuff to uh, to kids, and uh, I learned about them. Uh, uh, through the school Linux project, where they have been uh, involved for for quite some time now. Uh, after the meeting, we'll head over to uh, a restaurant for some uh, food and drinks. Uh, but uh, um, not quite sure <coughs> where we will end up. Uh, so this. Uh, this meeting, I hope this is the start of a cooperation between Nuuk and the Tech Kids uh, people in Germany. We hope to uh, bring uh, the ideas from Germany to Norway and are really uh, uh, curious to, uh, to learn more about the project uh, from Germany. So I give uh, the word to uh, Dominic and uh, <coughs> you can do yeah. further introduction. Okay, thank you, Peter. So, uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks thanks to Nuke for in inviting us to Oslo in order to introduce our ourselves to everyone in Norway who might be interested in uh, how and why we care about getting children and adolescents in involved in free software. Um, the title of our talk is well, I cannot. We may we 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 try to translate at least the the talk title for you, but uh, none of us can pronounce it yet. I hope to learn some Norwegian in the future. But um, the title of our talk is uh, "Open Source is Software Among Among Friends," which has become some motto of our organization. Um, yeah, I am Nick, or my full name is Dominic George. I'm 27 years old uh, and from Bonn in Germany, which used to be the capital of Germany some uh, 20 years ago, but it ain't anymore. My day job uh, is working as a software engineer in an open source company uh, in the town where I live. And I'm working in a security context there. I'm developing software uh, to track security uh, issues in the projects we maintain and, and develop. Um, yeah, I am basically uh, one of the founders or the ma main founder of uh, TechIts because I want to bring free and open source software to, to children and to schools and in to educational areas in general. Yeah, and um, when I worked at a, at a local school, I found that there are many, many students, many children who are capable to do quite a few things with technology and um, they somehow did not seem to find a platform to to show it and to uh, exchange their knowledge and their experience with with other children. So these were the two motivators that made me uh, look for ways to to change that. Yeah, my uh, my personal ultimate goal with our organization. We um, always have this point in our introductions um, because there are some differences. Uh, everyone has some other major goal. My major goal is to build the largest network of children and adolescents interested in free software. Um, in Germany we are the only one. I have uh, not a view of the entire world regarding that. Um, but I do hope that we can uh, one day have a very huge network of children caring about freedom and uh, liberty in software. So I will now pass on uh, to Eike, who will do the first part of the talk. Um, you can see at the top of the, well, it's printed pretty tiny, um, 
the structure of our talk will be talking about um, what we do, then about how we do how we do things and why we do them this way, because uh, some of uh, our proceedings might seem uh, inobvious or um, yeah uh, interesting on the first on first glance. And the last aspect will be uh, some ideas how we might be able to port the idea to some projects here in Norway. So, uh, Eike, the stage is yours. Um, I'm Eike Tim Jesinghaus. I'm from um, Remscheid in Germany. Um, it's written Bonn, but um, I'm not from Bonn. We forgot to edit that out. Um, I'm 16 years old and I don't have a day job. I am still a student and go to school. Um, and I am a member of TechEdz, um, where we educate, educate children and adolescents in programming and have fun at holiday camps. Um, at least that's what I do. <laughs> um, I'm a hobby programmer and um, I was always interested in programming and computers, technology, robotics and stuff like that. And um, that's how I got into it. Um, we have about 20 junior members. That means um, members under the age of 18, which I'm part of too. And um, about 10 adult members. So members 18 plus. Um, tickets emerged because um, Nick started organizing a youth program at Froscon, which is a free and open source software convention in Bonn, where he lives by now. And um, I was learning programming at that point in 2011. I was 10 or 11, uh, 10. I was 10 at that time and um, we organized a game programming workshop um, for children um, with Python because we thought that language was um, pretty well suited for uh, learning to start programming and we used PY game as a framework for the game stuff. Um, with time be, uh, so we organized the workshops yearly and with time the number of uh, workshops and participants and also um, tutors grew. Um, so 2013 we, uh, so Nick founded Tackets and um, it was then um, an official organi organization which um, still organizes these workshops today. Our um, goals are mainly to get children interested in technology and software, um, in uh, science, in mathematics, in, and stuff like that. Um, in Germany, we call it the MINT Fächer. Um, um, we um, also have a huge um, a huge value in um, showing the children and the adolescents the creative aspects of what we do so um, we show the children that they can do things they like um, like <coughs> build a robot and um, they decide how the robot behaves and they decide uh, how it looks like and um, that they can make their own first programs, which they decide what they do. And um, that's how we introduce children uh, to software and specifically to free software, like, so FOSS, and its ethics, like um, sharing knowledge with um, other people and um, we also help them to use, uh, we help them using and uh, propagating the software we use, we only use free software, um, by also um, giving them the possibility to easily use um, free chat programs instead of WhatsApp, um, Jabber, and uh, 
that's um, how we built a fast community among the children. And then we try to integrate this, this community into the big community of um, also adult people because um, the children always come with us on um, conferences like the FrostCon and there are also a lot of adult people and um, that way it kind of um, merges together so they get part of the big community that is the FOSS community. Um, we also support free software and education. We are developing a framework for um, freely creating augmented reality games like Pokemon Go in um, Python easily. Uh, we have talks about that that you can watch online. Um, there's not really much to say about that now because then I would hold a completely different talk, but it's about tickets now. Um, we get the children interested in, uh, like I said, uh, organizing workshops for um, topics that children are um, normally interested in, like game programming, electronics, robotics, and media production. Um, game programming is uh, really interesting for the adolescents and children because mostly all of them play video games and the idea of creating a, your own video game is really appealing to them and um, that's why we do it in the workshops we hold that I already talked about. Um, we have a lot of other workshops in the um, other sections like electronics where they use um, Arduino and Arduinos to um, build little LED machines that they can program by their own and um, make their own fun stuff with. Um, robotics, where they use the Lego Mindstorms NXT, which I think everybody knows. Um, um, they built their own ro robots with them. We teach them how to um, program them uh, without using these uh, strange UIs that um, are given to them on CDs when buying a Mindstorm. We use um, Java and uh, its frameworks to program it, mostly. Um, media production, we um, have a workshop where they can create their own stop-motion movies with um, Lego and audio systems. So, And then it's cut together and uh, in the end of the workshop um, they have their own little movies which are most of the time really funny and the kids have a lot of fun on that. Um, we organize holiday and weekend camps. Um, often these are held when there are conferences held too, like at the FrostCon we have three or four days, I'm not really sure. Um, where the children get um, together and besides doing the workshops, they can play together in the breaks and eat together and uh, find new friends. Uh, we organize weekly workshops, uh, created, they are called, or they are headed, created. Um, but I'm not part, uh, so, I'm not part of uh, the, those weekly workshops. I'm holding the game programming workshops um, where I also have a team, but Dominic will um, talk about that later on in the talk, um, how that's organized. But game programming is kind of the section I'm really into. Um, to introduce the children to FOSS and into the community, we use open educational resources which we also produce by ourselves um, to further um, suggest the idea of free and open uh, things to use. Um, we provide free services, as I already told, like um, a Jabber server for them and uh, an email server so they can easily use FOSS 
instead of closed source stuff like WhatsApp. Um, yeah, we run the workshops at FOSS conferences. I already talked about that. Um, and we actively promote contributing to FOSS projects by um, helping the children to, um, let's say, give bug reports to projects they use. Um, and we help them to get in contact with the people who um, are behind these projects so the children get integrated into open source projects and into the development of these projects because in the end that's what open source is all about. Um, we provide uh, a remote access to our, server, uh, to our servers and our free software services. Um, they went, went at our um, organizations, they uh, use a network of our own, um, which they can also access by remote um, from home to um, work further on their projects. When, for instance, a child created a game during a workshop, afterwards um, it can work from home and expand the game and uh, download it to its uh, own machine and everything that you can do with a remote access. <laughs> um, we also help with the development of uh, free educational software like uh, Scholar Linux or um, Debian Edu. Um, we also have an own uh, GitLab which is called EduGit where um, members can uh, push their projects to instead of using GitHub because um, in GitHub um, what was the age they were? 13. 13. Uh, children under 13 can't use GitHub. So we decided to um, make our own with GitLab and now we have EduGit where you could... Which is true for, ev for all other public Git hosting services. Yeah. yeah. They, all, they are all America based so they all limit the age to 13 years old. <laughs> yeah. uh, we found out that um, um, all public Git uh, software publishing platforms or uh, Git uh, development platforms um, turned out to be America based so they um, li Due to the restrictive laws in the USA, like COPPA, they are all limited to people older than 13 years, and even then they make it very difficult uh, for minors to accept their terms of service, because um, most because you always have to accept uh, terms of service that are uh, not only um, good for the users. There are always some um, some things they uh, they have to accept like uh, data usage and uh, additional license grants and so on uh, that uh, are hard, harder to overcome for children than they are for adults and uh, that's why we decided to um, provide a git hosting platform that everyone can use especially for educational projects or for projects that care about getting uh, children involved Um, well, you can still hold the microphone, it's your turn. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Didn't know that I uh, have to talk about something as well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, thank you, uh, Eike, for um, explaining the things that we that we do. Now we will start with a part about how we do these things. Um, there are a few principles we have found to that that work best for us, but or maybe you could even say sometimes they work worst for us, but they work best for the children. That's a, uh, a very important uh, thing that um, you have to think about. What works best for uh, the adult staff in an organization or the people who um, mainly 
create the concepts in the beginning um, might not always work out uh, very well for the children. And uh, that's what we are working on right now. When we uh, started our projects, we mainly had um, uh, adult members and uh, the, now we have more children in our organization than adults. Um, so uh, the concepts we created in, um, when we founded the organization uh, worked well with the uh, five or six children we knew by then. But they turned out to be um, not really accessible and not really scalable for uh, the children that uh, joined our organization later. So now we are in the major process of restructuring and now uh, the children are very deeply involved in this process of restructuring and creating new concepts. Um, so um, at first about the technical aspects, we uh, decided to really only use free software uh, as defined for example, by the Debian free software guidelines, um, the open knowledge definition and the, the open source definition. Um, there, there are situations where you need uh, in some way, uh, where, where you are required to use some non-free software. This is true, for, ex for example, for, for schools in Germany. There are um, um, federal states in Germany that uh, require the schools to run Microsoft products. The state of uh, Sachsen-Anhalt uh, signed contracts with Microsoft that uh, prohibits the use of any other software products and strange things like this. Um, we do not want, uh, of course we do not want to require anyone to use non-free software, but uh, in our projects we also want to uh, keep um, proprietary software that might be uh, insecure or, um, or stuff um, away from the children to show them that uh, everything can be done with, uh, alter with uh, software that looks alternative to them. For us, this, for us these uh, uh, open projects look very uh, natural, but uh, for someone who grew up in a household that uh, never used anything than an Apple iPad and, and a Microsoft uh, Windows computer, um, it looks alternative at the first glance and we show them that this is uh, very natural and useful and that they can do really creative things with it. Um, we operate a dedicated infrastructure access accessible to any participant and uh, also to the public um, partially. Uh, we really care about making everything that is needed to be creative with uh, software and technology to um, to be accessible to the children. We uh, have, for example, as I said, we ha run dedicated networks everywhere. Everywhere we organize projects, for example, at schools, at the university where Frostcon takes place, um, in the rooms where organization is uh, is based. Uh, we we run a network where everyone can uh, boot free software on their own laptops or uh, on our laptops that we um, that we uh, lend to the participating children and then they have a, des a desktop environment based on Debian with their own files and uh, with all the free software they can use in the workshops and uh, some free games and everything that uh, children might uh, want to look for and uh, with their own files and um, this is very tightly integrated. This means that uh, children who um, who first attend one of our workshops at their school um, and then uh, and then attend a holiday camp that we run, they find the same environment and they find their files. So we have um, a synchronized network of of servers that uh, provides them the same env environment everywhere, and even from home they can access it with a standard remote desktop client like the one integrated with Windows or with most uh, free software desktops or available in any Linux distribution or even with a web browser. So even children that um, cannot install their own software on their own devices uh, at home, there are many, well, let's say, 20 to 30 percent of children under the age of 12 cannot access their own hardware at home but share hardware with parents um, who might uh, find the need to uh, run Windows on their devices and, uh, and are very skeptical and uh, are harder to um, motivate to use uh, free software than, than the children are. And 
and the children can still use the free software desktop they got used to, and they find all the cool um, uh, the cool programs on that they use in the workshops. So that's very important to us. That uh, it's very important to us that. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit <laughs> irritated by the by the noise. Um, yeah, it's very important to us to uh, provide all the technical stuff that anyone might need to the participants. Yeah. Okay. Um, from an organizational view, we, we find it very important to be a democratic, to have a democratic uh, structure and uh, um, propagate the, the basics and uh, the ideas of, uh, demo uh, of a democracy, uh, even our organization. Um, we can do this um, because uh, learning how a real democracy works uh, is a very important thing for young people as well that they are not always confronted with at their schools, um, at least in, in Germany. Um, there are laws that uh, say that students in, uh, in their schools have uh, very far-reaching democratic rights, like uh, demonstrating against uh, whatever they want, or uh, taking part in uh, school conferences, or uh, placing votes in school conferences, but uh, this knowledge is I feel that this knowledge is sometimes kept a bit far away from the children who do not have the idea to read up the school laws. I think it should be taught to the children uh, when they enter school or uh, like maybe like reading or at least in uh, fourth or fifth grade they are ready to, to know that they have uh, certain rights to change things. Um, this is not uh, this is not done in, uh, in very wide areas so we try to um, also push this this knowledge. Um, we have dedicated teams for various aspects. So we have, for example, one team caring about um, uh, sponsoring, there, uh, so that we get money from companies or from whoever wants to support us financially. Uh, we have a team that cares about our website. We have a team that cares about uh, organizing uh, the camps, and so on, and. Children are parts of all these teams. They can choose where they want to, um, where they want to work, what uh, tasks they they like, what they want to learn, what they want to try out, and then they can join any any of these teams. Uh, of course, we have a board. Like most organizations, we are a, a non-profit organization, and uh, it is run by. Uh, a board of five people, of which three are adolescents as well. Um, yeah, we have a, pedag a pedagogical board that cares about um, how uh, children are, how we work with the children in uh, in workshops and so on. And of course, we have workshop teams. Uh, the four teams that Ike mentioned, and uh, this is the second kind of teams that the children can join and adults in the organization can join. And um, yeah, the basic rule is that for a team to exist or to be founded, uh, there must be at least one adult and two children in this team. And uh, there must never be only adults in a team. We found this to be very important to not um, get to a point where we have uh, proceedings and, and rules and ideas that we work with and that we rely on and uh, no child was involved in creating this. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, as I already said, we care about that uh, teams are always have um, junior members um, that we really uh, give the children the choice what they want to do. Um, what we do not want to hear at any point is that uh, something like uh, you are only 13 years old, you cannot uh, book the stay at the, at the youth hostel for this camp. 
because if the 13-year-old child can do that, then the 13-year-old child can do that. Maybe they need someone uh, from the board to legally sign it, but at least they can prepare this. And we see no reason um, to keep any anyone from doing or learning things like that. So uh, um, we help children... I, I use the word to judge, which is wrong. Uh, we do not want to judge anyone, um, but I didn't find the right word for that. What uh, I mean is that we um, help the children to find out what they already can do and what they want to do and where they can learn things. And uh, yeah, and we decide this by their by what they want to learn, what they are motivated to do, um, and not by what age they have. Um, yeah, so uh, if someone wants, has something that uh, they say, I want to do this, uh, then the right way might be for them to learn it by doing and be uh, supported by another experienced member, which might be another adolescent or child or might be an adult member. Um, yeah, so teams are composed based on interest and, uh, and learning goals and not by uh, pre-existing capabilities. That's a very, very important um, a very important basic uh, rule of what, what we do or what we found out works. Um, yeah, and for this to work, we uh, have, we um, talk to the children, uh, the, the pedagogic board talks with the children or maybe also with the parents or with teachers, but mostly with the children, of course, uh, about uh, what they have learned throughout the last uh, six months or what they want to learn, what was easy for them, what they found hard to do, uh, uh, what help they got, what help they would have needed that, that they didn't uh, get. So we find a way to always uh, find a way for development of everyone in the community. So uh, the one unalienable rule we also, uh, so we are a very uh, dynamic organization that changes a lot and uh, changes when there is need for change. Uh, but we found this one rule to be unalienable uh, that children and adolescents are part of every as aspect of the organization, not only of the workshops. Yeah, so uh, a very obvious question is uh, whether this kind of proceeding isn't very time consuming. Uh, and the clear answer to this question is yes, of course it is very time consuming. <laughs> um, there, is no, uh, there is no development or learning or um, uh, being proud of some achievement without investing time. So of course, uh, for a child to, if a, if a child invests their time in a project and learns something, then to make, to turn this into a happy and good experience, of course we have to invent uh, even, sometimes even more time. This is uh, very natural and, um, but I don't think this is a problem in any way. It's really worth the effort. We have uh, seen very, very good uh, developments. We have seen uh, children not only get involved in free software and in software development or in other technical fields. Uh, we have seen them uh, get involved in, uh, in, in, in propagating software, in, uh, in propagating free software, in uh, helping other children communicate with uh, software projects, even with uh, spreading uh, the knowledge about their democratic rights in their schools. We have seen children who suddenly uh, ask their teachers, uh, tell me, um, there is this, um, it's called the Schülervertretung, it's uh, more or less um, a team of, uh, of representatives from the students, and uh, most of the time in German public schools they do things like organi organizing, um, organizing football cups inside the school or something, and um, this is not that this is not their task, and they, and, and they suddenly ask, ask their teachers, uh, well, uh, why don't we take part in the school conferences? We are allowed to do this. This is our right. And the, children were, uh, the teachers were very uh, astonished that uh, they now had to change this. And um, I might add 
that this didn't uh, make them feel very comfortable towards us, <laughs> the teachers. But <laughs> but I was uh, really a bit proud of that. <laughs> yeah, so there are many, many effects um, that I really like and that are really, really worth the effort. And um, there is... You cannot tell a child, uh, learn to be responsible. And the child does something, reads a book about responsibility or something, and uh, suddenly, within the years, they get more responsible, or they learn what responsibility is. This simply doesn't work. Um, this only works if you tell them, here, here is something that you can try to be responsible with which uh, might be something as simple as uh, their own email account, which might be something uh, bigger. For example, uh, we gave, when organizing the next, uh, the biggest holiday camp we, we have every year at, at Foscon with 120 children, um, one task, for example, was uh, to find out how many uh, tickets for the public transport we have to buy. So there are, are participants that are older than 15 years who have to pay the adult price and under 15 years that have to pay the child price and even children that have a, that have a month ticket um, that they could use that need, needed to uh, be calculated out and then there are uh, tickets for four rides or for a day with five persons and the task was to find out what's the cheapest way for us uh, to transport all these children between the the, the youth hostel and the and the university and yeah it took uh, the children three hours to find out it took two of our adults three hours to help them with uh, some maths and uh, understanding the conditions of the the terms and conditions of the transport company but in the end they produced numbers that were correct to the cent and even less expensive than what I found out and we were Everyone was very proud about that. We invested really a lot of time and really a lot of people, um, but they really learned something that they could use in, in their life. And this is something that we do not want to forget when talking about um, teaching free software. We are not only teaching free software, we, we, are, um, we are teaching how to, how to cope with, with uh, many things. So yeah, it is time consuming but it is uh, time invested uh, really, really useful, I think, yeah. Yeah, so this is, um, the main idea about this is uh, to think force out outside the box. Free software is not only about code and licenses. Uh, code is cool, you can do very creative stuff with code. Licenses are boring, you can do very boring things with licenses, <laughs> but, uh, but there, this, is, this is not what free software is about. I can create uh, the same game without using with, without making it free software. I can do that. Um, I can uh, tell other people, you can play my game, you can uh, change my game or something uh, without ever caring about free software and knowing what that is. Um, in our eyes, free software is, is uh, it has an important ethical background. Um, there are the three basic rules, what uh, what free software is defined as, which is uh, everyone may use the software for every purpose, everyone may read the sources of the software, everyone may, may change the sources of the software for everything they need, and everyone may pass on uh, their changed software if they like. And these are not technical but ethical basics. Um, and these are about sharing and sharing knowledge and about um, uh, building a community and being active, not being passive. And uh, it's more or less, at least what I think, um, it's about social interaction. Social interaction is one thing that I like about free software. I have uh, uh, I've got in contact with uh, many, many people all through the world that uh, share the same goals and have uh, fun with the same things. Uh, and uh, one of the most interesting community was the Norwegian Skoldings community, by the way. Um, and uh, for, personally, for me, this is uh, one of the mo these are the most important aspects of free software. 
And everything of uh, this can be transferred to uh, other fields like organizational aspects, educational aspects, um, pedagogics. Um, there's, in my eyes, there's absolutely no reason for a teacher or a school to uh, write. What's the Zeugnis of English? I I I don't know the the English word that's uh, very embarrassing. Uh, this this sheet with the marks that you get at the end of each term uh, that children get to say, well I uh, was very well in maths and uh, not. Pardon? Grading? Yeah, this uh, yeah the the year grading yeah, and um, I do not see any reason why uh, a teacher should uh, grade their children, uh, their students, uh, without the children being in the room and without uh, talking to the children. There is no reason to do that. At least I never saw one. And um, so there are many very subtle ways where uh, the ethics that we found for our software projects can be uh, transferred into other aspects. We already did this. Uh, this is already done very widely with open data, uh, open educational resources. Um, but there are many, many other f fields where these basic thoughts can have a very, um, a very uh, interesting and, and good effect. Yeah. So that's basically uh, everything about what we do and how and why we do things. Um, I think this was a very, uh, I, I did a very uh, long introduction <laughs> to this now, but uh, there are really so many uh, important uh, things to consider and uh, so many experiences, experiences w we have made that I really find important to share. Um, so, the interesting question we hoped to discuss today and I hope that we can have this discussion at uh, some later point in uh, in some other form because um, due to the holidays not so many visitors uh, seem to be here. Um, the interesting question is uh, would it be possible to uh, try something like this out in Norway as well. Um, I don't remember quite well whether it was Petter who uh, had this idea first or whether it was Alex or I think it was you, Petter, I don't know. Um, but um, I think, yeah, I think it is very important to not um, yeah, to get international with this idea. We have international software projects and uh, naturally uh, we should also have an international community um, of children working with FOSS. Um, yeah, and of course, uh, we cannot uh, run projects all throughout the world. We do not even scale very well uh, in Germany right now. This is part of our efforts to restructure our organization, um, to uh, get um, more widespread uh, projects and um, and a more widespread member base throughout Germany, but it's uh, simply impossible for uh, a local community to do this all throughout the world. So I'm very excited to um, see the community grow el elsewhere. Um, I have taken a few notes about uh, what might be a good starting point and this is that uh, whoever tries to implement something like this in Norway um, would not have to start from zero uh, because we are very open to um, provide everything we already have to uh, whoever shares uh, the same goals. So. Um, uh, we have a very extensive uh, server infrastructure that we are happy, very happy to share. Um, we have some experiences and uh, some documents that might be reusable. We are working on, trans, uh, on, on, on internationalization of the documents. But for example, things like our uh, uh, pedagogic uh, concepts uh, that we have uh, written in a very informative text for schools and parents to read. Uh, might be reusable and stuff like that um, to keep the effort of getting started. Um, yeah, um, a bit smaller than 
uh, it might be the case when I'm starting from scratch. Um, yeah, what I also see is, uh, uh, what I would also very much like to see is uh, having uh, contacts, very early contacts between uh, children from Norway and children from Germany. Um, mainly because uh, the exchange is very important and as I already said, uh, an international community is uh, also a very important part of, of our software. And uh, I am very certain that there might be organizations and companies who might be interested in, uh, in supporting uh, these international contacts. For example, we have a very active uh, German-Norwegian uh, community in Germany that might be very excited to, uh, to support something like that. So this is also one aspect that I really find uh, important about these efforts. Um, yeah, but apart from that, uh, we would be very uh, open to support uh, an organization in whatever form uh, might work for uh, any, everyone in Norway. But these are only, uh, only ideas. Um, yeah, I don't know uh, whether the people who are here uh, have want to uh, discuss uh, something of what something of the points that uh, that we talked about or have questions or the uh, people watching the stream might be interested in adding their ideas and I have one question uh, when you are organizing uh, workshops and events what kind of location uh, do you uh, need to run these things and how do you get uh, access to uh, that kind of uh, oh, site, location, room? I don't know. What do you need? What do you use to uh, do these workshops? Um, the basic requirements for uh, a basic workshop that we run is a room that has tables, chairs, some power sockets and a network connection. That's uh, basically everything we need, um, because we have a stack of uh, servers to provide the um, the workshop network that we talked about with a desktop environment uh, for netbooting, and we have a stack of um, of laptops that were donated to us that everyone can use, and we have all the materials for the different workshop topics. So uh, for uh, for starting a, a basic workshop, really everything that is needed is a room. Yeah. Um, in Germany, we mostly run our um, our programs together with open source conferences. So, um, the logistics concerning uh, rooms and uh, and stuff like that and network are mostly managed by these conferences. Yeah, that's um, how it works in Germany. There are some smaller programs, like at the Tübinger Linux Tag, we have. Uh, two rooms where we do one day workshops and the children have a lunch break together and then there are bigger programs like at Froscon where we have two days of workshops, one half day, uh, on Friday we have, have half a day for uh, the children to get to know each other, to find, find contact, to uh, uh, roam the area and um, the very very big uh, hostel that we have, uh, that we rent for this um, for this program, yes, we we rent a whole hostel, not some rooms, <laughs> for this, um, and um, the following two days are uh, filled with workshops and uh, and an evening e event, the social event of the Froscon, where the children really get in touch with uh, other software projects. Uh, last year, some were really excited to um, to find out that they uh, were just talking to. Uh, some guys that were really active in developing Mozilla Firefox and they uh, found that really interesting to meet these people. Um, yeah, and there's basically very much uh, room between a very basic workshop and a very exten extended workshop weekend. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on the RSC or something? Okay. okay. Thank you.
Uh, the workshops you do at conferences, what kind of tasks do you uh, normally uh, assign to the workshops? What kind of well, assignments, what kind of output is coming from these uh, workshops? That's a very interesting question um, because this is something that um, that uh, puts us apart from some other organizations that do uh, in computer or programming workshops with children. Um, we do not plan the workshops for um, the for the programs that uh, that are created during this workshop. We do not usually say, um, at the end of this workshop, uh, the programs will do exactly this and that. We um, have, we normally have a structure where the children are introduced to the topic and the technology used um, at the start, start of the workshop and then uh, do some, some, uh, uh, some stuff together, uh, build their first robo robot, write their first program for that. And then very quickly they develop their own ideas. Also at game programming, um, the children very quickly develop their own ideas uh, that uh, that they want to try to implement. Most of the time we find that uh, they really have realistic goals that they can um, that they can achieve in the time they have. Sometimes um, there are groups that have. Uh, that that plan too much. We help the children to make a plan that will work out in the end, but sometimes we also have projects that are continued at home. But this is also a good, um, this is also fine for us. Um, this is basically um, up to the workshop teams how they do that, and up to the children. Yeah. We also might work during the work, uh, might might ask during uh, the workshops um, whether some children want uh, to create something together with us, with an uh, with an example from us, and learn more or start uh, doing their own projects. They might even be uh, split into two groups. Um, for that, this is very flexible. Um, our goal is that the children uh, continue learning and working with the things they. Um, they learn at our projects and that they uh, keep up their interest, not that they have a goal during this workshop that they achieve and then they think they have, uh, they have achieved everything they, they can with the, um, with the technology at hand. Yeah. Okay. I was wondering, uh, you've been involved in this uh, project for quite some time now. Uh, what are the two most interesting uh, workshops you've been involved in so far? Um, <coughs> the most interesting workshop I was involved in um, was the game programming uh, workshop, which is also led by me, but um, that's why I'm leading that, um, because I'm so interested in game programming. Um, and besides that, I guess it was um, the robotics thing because the children really came up with some interesting ideas in both of the workshops and um, it was really exciting to um, talk to them about how they came up with the ideas and um, how they managed to, in the end, implement those ideas. So, um, yeah. So I um, took uh, one step yesterday. Uh, I thought it would be nice to have some uh, something in this in this presentation for people to find out uh, where um, the efforts might continue or uh, get started. Uh, so I created a, a mailing list, um, which is listed here on the presentation, and uh, below it there's a. URL where uh, everyone can subscribe to this mailing list and I really do hope that um, some people will just show up who think that um, finding out how to implement uh, such a project in Norway 
um, might work. So, um, yeah, I think we should probably give uh, a bit of time for uh, to find people. Maybe um, we can also uh, make some. Uh, we can also advertise this on some of the new mailing list. Maybe I don't know. And um, yeah, I hope there will be some some people who are interested and uh, might add their ideas and yeah, just get into a discussion so things get get rolling in some way. Thanks again to Luke for for hosting us and also for uh, for funding this uh, this talk. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. I think.